When I'm not fielding the single greatest threat in YouTube history, I like to answer questions that I get on YouTube, so let's get to it. If you ever came to the Bed Bath & Beyond I work at, I would kick your ass. <laughs> that's, it's great on so many levels. First of all, that's some pretty serious edge <laughs> to be talking that much game and having that much defense at the Bed Bath & Beyond franchise that you work at. So this was a comment on the video where I demoed the Bed Bath & Beyond drum kit. Which, you know, I, I even gave it a thumbs up as far as it being worth $8. But now I'm a little worried because you didn't specify which Bed Bath & Beyond that you work at. So now for the rest of my life, every time I go into Bed Bath & Beyond, I gotta look over my shoulder. It's kind of terrifying. But, uh, you know, I guess it's just the cost of being on YouTube nowadays. So, uh... Look out for this guy. When did you know you're ready to do an open mic night? My local place likes people to do their own tunes and that complicates things. So the fact that you can somewhat coherently type into a YouTube comment box means you're ready to do an open mic night, trust me. Me and Kindred have been like kind of co-hosting this open mic night on Sunday nights in town. And I really gotta vlog it because you see some really strange stuff going on there. There is such an enormous dynamic of performance at open mic night. So if you're one of these people who are like, I just don't know if I'm good enough to play, you're good enough to play open mic night. <laughs> Trust me on that. I feel like I, I think I waited a long time, probably longer than I, much longer than I needed to, to actually go play open mic night. Here's the thing, nobody cares. It's like open mic night. I think there's a, there's a built-in expectation of that. You can only impress someone at open mic night, in my experience. Again, there's, there's a lot of weird stuff that goes on. It's worth it to go. Here's, here's what you should do. You should just go as an observer once, scout it out, and that'll probably give you like a huge confidence boost just to do it. Now, that being said, every place is different. I've been to some open mic nights where it's like, wow, this is like, this is like some quality stuff going on. And then, you know, you might catch it on just a, a weird night. And then the other night, you know, people are doing like, beat slam poetry to like lo-fi beats and stuff like that. So yeah, just, just go do it, it'll be fine. This couldn't be more wrong and insulting to traditional Irish musicians. Not a jig, and we don't use B major seven or dadgad. You're using American bastardizations of original music. It's about that time of year again where my intro to Irish music guitar video starts taking off the closer it gets to St. Patrick's Day and all of the salty Irish comments come in when again, all I did was teach how to play a jig and that some Irish songs are in dad gad, which apparently <laughs> could not be more wrong. I promise you I could have made that video more wrong very, very easily. Also, B major seven. Of course, no Irish song would ever use a B major seven for the love of God. Little does he know, I am working on a Celtic album that will f forever change the face of Irish music and really solidify the bastardization of uh, the American version of that for all of time. Are you actually the one playing all of these instruments? What you showed on the Native American flute didn't match the sound. I know as someone who plays the Native American flute, as well as other things. <laughs> First of all, Mr. Native American flute expert, that happens to be a Peruvian bird flute. So you've just embarrassed yourself. <laughs> you two aren't that fun to watch, says Rick Ross. The boss, Rick Ross, with the salty comment. This has been a salty week for some reason. I don't know, I guess the, uh, the cheer from the holidays has finally worn off. Everyone's just in the dredges of winter. And even, even my man, even my number one homie, Rick Ross, has something f funny to say. You're kind of a dick. What's the point of having Andreas on the show if you're going to not give a F and interject every 10 seconds? Flippant. The hits keep on coming with Chief Rager. <laughs> I just, I just, I love YouTube. YouTube is so great. And I, I cannot really tell you people how happy it makes me just to read people's like, but sadly, the last couple haven't had good avatars. A lot of just the avatar combo with the comment, with the name Chief Rager, staying true to his roots, raging like a true chief does. But uh, yeah, not the first time I've been called flippant. The most impressive thing I can do with my right hand is hit that like button. Question, do you use hybrid picking? So hybrid picking, used to I used to think of it as like, 
something akin to, to flying a helicopter or juggling four balls or something where you actually uh, like use a pick, but then you can kind of like finger pick on top of that picking, which I've never practiced this, but somehow I've just started kind of doing it. I, I can't even like explain Like, I think it's just from, from playing all these shows, I, I usually use a pick almost all the time. And I think I've just gotten used to the point where now these fingers have somehow just started playing things. <laughs> so I've, ne I've never ever practiced hybrid picking. It's never been a goal of mine. Now, for certain styles of playing it, it very well should be a goal of yours if that's what you're into because you know you really kind of get the best of both worlds with hybrid picking. Again, I'm not a hybrid picking expert by any means. I've just accidentally started unwittingly doing it for some reason. But uh, if I do actually become proficient enough at it, maybe I'll do like a lesson or something on it. Just realized you remind me of Captain Sparkles. So I was really excited about this comment, but then I realized that Captain Sparkles is different than Mr. Sparkles. Captain Sparkles is apparently a pretty famous YouTuber who's like balling, which is great. I mean, I, I appreciate, you know, the compliment or whatever, but I was much more excited to be compared to Mr. Sparkles from The Simpsons, which is probably my favorite Simpsons character. So, uh, you know, I, I get that not a lot of people see the Mr. Sparkles resemblance here, but uh, it's something that I still I still carry in my heart. Okay, four to five Sean's lessons a week eventually made me know a lot of things with hardly any effort. Now I'm pretty comfortable improvising, but still have no repertoire since I'm lazy and don't learn songs, at least not whole songs. Sean, how to make me learn songs? I think that if you're kind of good at guitar, but you don't know any songs, shame is the answer. Shame is almost always the answer with stuff like this. If you're good at guitar, you should know some songs, especially if it's a goal of yours. There's no excuse for you not to know songs. There's a lot of people that suck at guitar that know a ton of songs. So really, take the shame of that and have that be a great motivating factor for you to really just suck it up, learn some songs. Even if you don't have to sing it, sing it in your, in your mind or something while you're playing it because seeing the structure of a song played all the way through and being able to kind of like learn that is a totally different part of like your brain and different kind of part of your musicianship beyond just kind of, you know, just, just shredding or, or whatever, you know, it is that you're doing. Just learn some songs or shame, shame. I love guitar so much that I wish my pee pee was shaped like one. I... <laughs> For the next Q&A, can you demonstrate how to do the Elliott Smith finger flick strumming? I've noticed you do it sometimes. I want to learn it. Thanks. So this is something that I didn't really know, even know it was like an Elliott Smith thing. Again, Elliott Smith is my guy. I'm a huge Elliott Smith fan. When you say that kind of strumming, I, as far as like compared to like my playing, what I do, I'm thinking something like, you know. something that I, I feel like Elliot probably did a lot. And again, like a lot of things that you just develop in your playing, I never really sat down to, to practice that. It just kind of happened. And since he's such a huge influence of mine, it's, it's probably no surprise that I accidentally do something similar to him. What that is, is kind of like a hybrid finger style uh, technique, or maybe I'm just kind of doing like a little Travis picking thing, but then emphasizing with the nail of my index finger, downstrokes, right? Something that Elliot Smith does a lot and something that I share with him is just a love of like playing things in a waltz or, or in six, eight time signature, like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Something like that. If it's two bars of three, the first bar is gonna be pretty much solely finger picked. One, two, and three, and one, two, three. Right, so the second, either if you think of it, if you're counting in six, it'd be the four, or the second bar of three, that down stroke on the four, or the next one. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I guess you could consider that like a flick. And what that is is just kind of like a repetitive finger style technique that goes into kind of a down strum, which again, gets that emphasis, uh, emphasis that seems kind of like you're playing with a pick, that kind of flicks on, that has the attack of a pick, but is a dynamic difference from kind of like the, the pads of your fingers, finger style wise. So I guess that's kind of, if I'm understanding your question correctly, I think that's something that I kind of like, 
I like the sound of a lot because it really is kind of like a marriage between kind of like the softer finger style stuff and just like playing with the pick. So I guess it's kind of like the best I can explain it. You two act like you know so much about modal harmony. Really, you just know the flats and sharps in each modal scale and are just winging it. In the examples of how to implement the notes, you guys are playing modes and hitting random notes and pretending like you meant to and then saying, oh, cool, move there, buddy. These guys are complete wankers. They have no idea what they're doing with modal harmonies. Learn the modes and then move on. Turn these jokers off and learn something to someone that knows the modal jazz harmonies. <laughs> Learning modes only helps you when you start soloing over chord progression. As the chords change, you can change blah 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 blah. But also it only works over an A minor chord and D Dorian works over the D minor. Does that make sense? Does it make it obvious how half to break this lesson is? Hope I can point some of you in the right direction. Best of luck. This is a great example of, of the avatar and the saltiness. John Tanberg adjusting <laughs> how his sunglasses sit on his face in his YouTube avatar. It's perfect. I can just see him adjusting his eyeglasses as he types out this long thing about modal harmonies. Ah, oh, it's great. I love it. Don't forget the first step in supporting a YouTuber is thumbing up the video and leaving a comment. It may sound banal, but many people don't do that, not understanding the importance. Question for the next QA, tiny off topic. What would you suggest to someone that is a total disaster at singing, like not to hold almost any existent note for graduating from a zero out of 10 to at least a two out of 10 skill level? So I don't know if I'm great enough at singing to be giving singing lessons, but I could definitely get you to a two out of 10, okay? So one thing is in the last three years, my singing has improved drastically. And a lot, some of that is practice for sure, but a lot of that too is just being around other great singers. If you've seen this channel, you know I've got like this, like ridiculous variety of uh, amazing singers that I get to work with, right? Which is, I'm, I'm super grateful for. And just being around them has just in turn made me a better singer. And it's just kind of like being in an, an environment like that just kind of, you know, you assimilate a lot of the things. Now, one thing that I've learned as far as like, just kind of like getting better tone is it really is about breathing and, you know, people say singing from your diaphragm. I think the most important thing that I've learned from there is when you're actually singing, you should be able to kind of feel it in your abdominal muscles somewhere. I remember, you know, three years ago, I, I could always like sing, but I never really considered myself a very good singer until I started kind of like really being attentive to what was happening. So if you're not feeling it at all, like down here, you're kind of disconnected from uh, the amount of tone that you get, which uh, I, I noticed when I started kind of like realizing that, my voice became a lot less nasal and a little bit fuller sounding than maybe it was if you like listen to like some of the original music from like three years ago. Uh, so that's kind of like just like a tone tip that, that kind of helped me out a lot. As far as pitch goes, which, you know, usually bad singing is a combination of like pitch tone and like breathing and stuff like that, right? There are way better YouTube channels for like singing lessons than I could ever do. So check those out too. But one thing that I think is really helpful and I've mentioned it before is being able to sing the major scale, right? Whether you're just humming it, or they're doing like a something like that, or like a or whatever, being able to kind of like match pitch with that and finding the range that you can do it the most comfortably. Because I don't care who you are, anybody can sing. I think it's really just a matter of finding the range that is most comfortable for you, where that sits, you know, like in, in your head voice and like your chest voice is all, all sorts of stuff like that. So I learned the major scale is so important because you can very easily change the major scale. Like if G is like, do, 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 do. If that's too low for you, try it on A. Mm -hmm. And just keep going until you find something that is like generally in the ballpark of something that you think you can almost do. And then once you find a, like a part that you're, you know, not a zero out of 10, maybe you're a one out of 10 at doing that spot, like say a, a major is your range, then look into maybe being able to transpose songs that you like because you know, I'm, I'm sure songs that you like are a lot of times impossible for you to sing. And once you kind of make that connection where you can sing a song that you like, you have just even a better connection to it. But again, the catch 22 is that like some of the best songs out there are like really hard to sing because they're incredible vocal performances. So being able to transpose songs is something you need to look into if you want to improve your own singing because you'll be more passionate about practicing if you can actually practice singing songs that you like 
And a lot of the time, you're gonna to have to change the key to something that might be a little bit more manageable to you and then branch off from there. Singing the major scale, being more attentive to like the actual mechanics of singing. Again, there's better YouTube videos out there that I can describe, it's just my own experience. Are just things you can do, but really have the confidence that absolutely anybody can sing. You know, you might not be Matt Bellamy or Christina Aguilera or whatever, but anybody can work on their pitch and be able to sing in an acceptable range and get to at least a two out of 10, come on. So for listening homework, I'm going to link you to my absolute favorite Norwegian singer-songwriter, Aurora. Specifically, the Like A Version cover she did of my favorite Massive Attack song, Teardrop. Really cool, she's got a lot of very interesting RC stuff out there you might wanna check out. Uh, again, just kind of like a cool, different, unique person in uh, you know the musical community that is doing really cool stuff. So check that out. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to you all soon, thanks a lot.